Beggar's Banquet First Listen, track five and six, Jigsaw Puzzle and Street Fighting Man. Track number five is Jigsaw Puzzle. So I've heard that Bob Dylan was a huge influence on both the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. So it looks like this work takes after Dylan. It's a imitation of some of Dylan's more surrealist mid 60s work. Jigsaw Puzzle is the second longest track on the album. It's an observation of a shady and bizarre environment in which the singer finds himself surrounded by misfits and outlaws. Sounds pretty cool. Let's check out the track. Here we go. on my doorstep trying to waste his time with his methylated sandwich <laughs> he's a walking clothesline and here comes the bishop's daughter on the other side and she looks a trifle jealous been an outcast all alive. Me, I wait so patiently. Oh, wow. Lying on the floor. He's definitely parrot copying I'm just Dylan. Trying to do my jigsaw puzzle. Okay, if it wasn't obvious from the first part, which I thought it really did sound like a Dylan song, Dylan-esque style, especially the writing, which we can get into. But this chorus is like the way Dylan would sing it, right? Especially this this first bit really did sound like a sort of uh, attempt at Dylan. I think uh, the way that he's wrote the song also sounds like something Bob Dylan would do. So he's, Dylan often compares two opposites together. So he's got a tramp. And he's got the daughter of a bishop, and he's found a way to make them both seem alike by being outcasts. Oh, the gangster looks so frightening with his bluger in his hand. But when he gets home to his children, he's a family man. But when it comes to the nitty gritty, Again, to speak on the writing of Jagger, it's lines like this that make him so uh, interesting and, and fantastic as a writer, right? He, I think when he says, I'm just trying to do this jigsaw puzzle before it rains anymore, is more so an idea about not a real jigsaw puzzle, but the jigsaw of life and these characters that are in his life. Like the way he's pieced together like a jigsaw, the outlaw, who's also a family man, the beggar who ha is having methylated sandwiches, which is a reference to cigarettes, right? Menthol, I said methylated, mentholated. Menthols are a type of cigarette, right? So that's a reference to cigarettes. Great little line there. And then the bishop's daughter, and he's all connected them together. That's the jigsaw that he's, he's solved. <laughs> Been outcast all 
shout out to the piano player. I think his name is Nicky Hopkins. Just fantastic piano work throughout all of uh, the Rolling Stones' work, their discography, their different songs. It's not always, I don't think it's always Nick, Nicky Hopkins, but he, he shows up quite a lot. Brilliant, always with the piano. It's a very underrated part of the band. This is some great lines, waving the hankies in the air. I think that's a reference to the World War, World War II, especially because he says grandmas. I guess they would be grandmas now at this point in the 60s. And then there's this line, this verse or a kind of description of his own band, right? The singer, he looks angry, being thrown to the lions. The bass player talks about the drummer, talks about guitar players looking damaged. Probably a good description of the Rolling Stones. And shouting, it's not fair. There's a regiment of soldiers standing, looking on. And the queen is bravely shouting. Interesting kind of haunting guitars in the background. I'm guessing that is Brian Jones. The screechy kind of sound. Very, very interesting song. I thought it was a sort of sincere attempt at doing a, um, a Bob Dylan track. Uh, did I absolutely love the song? No, I think it has kind of a bizarre element to the sound. Maybe that's what they was going for. Like those weird psychedelic screeches you can kind of hear in the background. And it took after Dylan in many ways in the sense that Dylan uses like weird surrealist imagery and non sequiturs especially in his verses that don't seem to lead into one another, but they essentially speak about society in some way. And that's what I think he was doing here with the different characters that he, or scenes that he was describing. So very Dylan-esque and the chorus definitely sounded like he was kind of doing an impression of Dylan. Um, all in all, I think it was cool. I, I liked it. I liked, I liked what they were trying to do, but I like when they sort of do the Rolling Stones thing, you know, and maybe not so much when they do these kind of impressions. So the country track has been my least favorite song where they was doing like a, a fake American accent as well in that one. And then this song is maybe after that in terms of the list so far, regardless, pretty cool song, pretty cool song. Lyrically, I thought it was really good. Track six on Beggar's Banquet is called Street Fighting Man and it was inspired by riots that were taking place in Paris. This was a time of huge upheaval with the Vietnam War, uh, with protests going on, with the youth seeming to be in revolt, with the Beatles coming out with tracks like Revolution. So this is kind of maybe the Rolling Stones attempt at a track like that. Uh, he made a comment that London seems sleepy in comparison and then witnessed a massive war in, uh, not war, a anti-war protest in, in Mayfair. So this is considered one of uh, their most popular songs, very controversial track as well, and features a Indian instrumentation contribution by Brian Jones, as usual, bringing something different. So here we go. Let's check out this song. Interesting guitar sound, man.
awesome, awesome start to the track. I think, or not I think, I've definitely heard that sound before. This this verse is very, very popular. It's been used in all kinds of different media. Love the rebellious uh, protest nature of the track. Also, the sound of that guitar is really interesting. It sounds like it's using that effect once again, that um, double tracked or like maybe put on a cassette delay or something. I think that's the, the name of the effect, but it is like imitating what old blues records used to do. And I really like the, the style of that on this. No! Jagger's so great at that. I think the passion and uh, emotion in whatever song he's singing really seeps through in his vocals. And when he's in this rebellious attitude, when he's straining his voice, I think of tracks like um, No Satisfaction, where he's awesome at doing that. Um, when he played the guy who was looking for drugs uh, or sort of like a Night Stalker character in Can't You Hear Me Knocking was another good example of that, where he sounds like he's just raw with emotion. <laughs> Again, great piano playing in the background of this. Um, what a brilliant track, man. What an awesome time, 68, late 60s, where music uh, in a lot of ways mirrored what the youth were feeling at the time. You know, there was no kind of strange commercialization that had happened, I think, after this era where people almost recognized the power of music and um, diluted it essentially and made it into like this kind of plastic product. But this is some real shit right here, man. It reminds me of like a, a Public Enemy song where it's just telling you how it is. I think this chorus is really funny and sort of poignant as well. Well, what can a poor boy do except to sing for a rock and roll band? It's like his rebellion or his protest is going to be unheard, but the only way he can get it out is through this music and representing what he can through the music. Because in sleepy London town, there's no place for a street fighting man. You'd be arrested or people won't agree with you. So what he'll do is he'll sing these songs and let you know how he feels. Really cool. I think I was also looking up the Outcast track, which I want to compare this to. I always link it to hip hop songs. If you guys want to check out a track called Humble Mumble, which has a very similar um, attitude to, this, to the track, where they're trying to tell you like, how are we supposed to get to the youth if it's not through the music? This is our way of doing it, where people have marches. What we'll do is make our music like a march. With Under 3000 saying, the game changes every day, so obsolete is the fist and marches. So obsolete is the fist and marches. Speeches only reaches those who already know about it. And I think 
he's alluding to the same idea here. How do you get to the youth? Well, it's not going to be by preaching from a podium. Not always. Maybe another way to get through to them is through the music. Great track, man. Really love this one. I think those uh, sort of distorted guitars, uh, the effect that they put on it really helped to add to the sort of atmosphere of the song. 